Hello and welcome to Zora's channel, where we help you be more productive by keeping you zen. I think we all know by now that we can create charts in Google Sheets. And luckily, these charts can be now much more complex than they used to be in the beginnings of the Google Sheets experience. But sometimes all you need is a tiny chart in a worksheet cell that provides a visual representation of your data. Something that will make you see much faster a seasonal increase or decrease, economical cycles, or just highlight maximum or minimum values. For this, there is a function called Sparklines. You have it in Microsoft Excel as well as in Google Sheets. Let's see how this function works and how can you visualize your data better in no time. Let's analyze the data in front of us for a moment because we will be using it for the rest of this exercise. We have in front of us a file with 700 lines of daily sales of different products in different countries. I would like at the end of this exercise to see the monthly sales per country and try to see if there is a trend during the year of 2014 when this uh, dummy data was generated. To do so, I would like to first group the data so I can uh, read it easier. So I'm selecting the entire uh, sheet. I'm going on data, pivot table, and then I will create a new pivot table on a new sheet. I would add the countries on the rows as columns, I will use the month number and then as values, I will pick the number of units sold. Because I selected the entire sheet in the first place, the pivot table also took the blank rows. We don't need them, so we will filter them out by adding a new filter on the country, for instance, and I will uncheck the blank rows. Once I hit OK, our monthly unit sales per country are showing in the table in front of us. Now let's try making it a bit more narrow on the column size so we can see the end of the table. And because we only need a graph, I will lose the um, totals both on lines and columns. And we have now a nice and neat file where we have all the units sold per country and per month. With the data as it is presented in the pivot table, I can eventually see that at the end of the year we have higher numbers than in the beginning of the year. So looks like the sales grew during this uh, 2014 year, but I cannot see if there were any highs and lows during the, the year. I cannot see if there was uh, a peak maybe in the spring or a downside during the summer holidays. These things, I cannot easily see them just by looking at the data. I would love to have a more visual approach. For this, like we said in the beginning of the tutorial, we can use the function called Sparkline. Let's see it first how it looks like, and then we'll go in details. So the Sparkline, it requires the data that you would like to analyze, and then you can add some options at the end of the formula. Let's go with a plain formula without any optional items. So we are selecting the data that we want to have in the graph. In this case, all the sales from the first to the last month of the year. We close the parentheses or press tab, and then we hit enter and we have the graph with the evolution of the sales. In this case, it is a line that goes in the left side from the first month, January, and then grows until the month of December. Because it is a formula, I can easily apply the same formula to all the other rows by 
clicking the corner of the cell with the formula already filled in and dragging it down until the end of the table. Once I'm releasing the mouse, the formula is applied to all the lines. Uh, easy way of checking if the formula was properly copied, double clicking on the file that will show you where the data is picked from. So this is the basic way of adding a small graph in one cell for the data that you want to analyze. Let's see what else we can do with this graph and uh, let's write this down. Here it is a line graph. And let's move to the formula definition that you can also see it in the description down below where we see different options that we can add to this file. So we used the first sample usage. That means that we had a line type of graph and nothing fancy, no colors, no nothing. Let's see how our formula will look like if we would like to change the chart type into bars. And let me add the equal in front of the formula and then drag it for the entire table. Let's see what other options we have. Uh, back and now we have columns. That looks uh, a bit nicer. And then what else? We have one more called win loss. Now you will see in, in the first part of the table, it makes no sense using this win-loss formula or sparkline but this one will be very good to be used if you have positive and negative values and I will show you in a second what that means so we have here columns and then on the last one we have win-loss and just to, to better see what win and loss mean Let's add some uh, data. Let's take the Mexico data one more time, add it at the end of the table and say that some of the months had negative sales. And now if I'm copying the formula on the line with this uh, positive negative values, you will see that wherever you have a positive value, you have the column that goes on top of the uh, middle axis and the months with a negative value will go below the middle axis. This is a very easy way of seeing where you have positive or negative values. I am personally not a fan of the bar charts in general. So I'm sure somebody will like them and for some applications this chart will be useful. However, I think majority of us will be using the line or the columns. The advantage of using the columns part line is that you can see uh, easier where this uh, month ends and, and starts because in, in here it is kind of difficult to see which month is this small peak? While in here it's easy, you see it's, it's the month number six. That would be a sale of the month of June. However, if you are having very long data, having a lot of small columns for your months will not be doable. So maybe you will need to go back to a line representation. Now, a uh, funny part is that we can also use the columns to see positive and negative values. And if I would copy the formula with the columns sparkline on the line with the, um, with the negative values, you will see that you have some values that go below the baseline of all the positive values. Maybe just to make it more visible, you can see how these values are depicted here. 
An interesting difference between the columns and the win-loss chart types is that for the columns, your data will always be in proportion with your sales. So if in the win-loss, you can only have one or minus one values on the columns, they will be direct proportional with the values that you have, giving you maybe better way or a better visibility of how big that month was. However, if you just need to see if the value was positive or negative, you can easily use the win-loss chart type and that will make your data visible enough. Since we are now getting closer to the end of this tutorial, let's see what else can be personalized in the Sparkline formula. And for this, let's go in the formula definition and check it out together. We've seen that the mandatory information that needs to be in the Sparkline formula is the data range or the array containing the data to plot. And then we are adding the options. In our case, the first thing that we did was to define the chart type. And this chart type can be line, bar, column, or win-loss. We defined all of them, and because we would like to add more options, we will need first to see what kind of chart type we want to go more in depth with. Because you will see on this file that for the line chart types, you have a set of extra options. For the column and win-loss park lines, you have other options. And then for the bar charts, you will also have other options. Let's see for our columns and win-loss park lines. What options can we add on the formula? And that will be, for instance, color, where we can set the color of the chart columns or we can set the color of the lowest value in the chart or the column of the highest value in the chart and so on. Let's see for our exercise that we would like to see in green the month with the highest sales. So that means that we will need to use this high color optional uh, attribute in our formula. I'm copying the high color just to avoid any mistyping and let's move on the formulas and we have a chart type column and after this we would like to add this extra information so we define the chart type and now we go for the other option high color we follow it by a comma and then in between brackets you can add the name of the color or the hex code of the color. In this case, it is green, so I think it's easier to write green than writing in the hex code of the green color. So this will be the formula that will take into account the information from the column B3 to M3, will plot a graph as columns, and the highest column will be green. Let's see how this one will look like in reality. I'm copying the formula and I will plug it here on our chart. And you see here that one of the columns, it is now green. And uh, if you're checking the data, it looks like indeed the month of December is by less than 100 units higher than the other month. Uh, let's copy this formula and let's move it everywhere and we see that for all the other cases the month of October it's showing the highest sales. So it is an easy way of seeing the highest value. Of course you can get the lowest value maybe on red and that will be also easy just changing in the formula low color and then the green color will be moved into red in our case. And then we will see the red line. And because it's the smallest cell, it is just barely visible, a small red line. It will be maybe interesting to see in red the negative months of the win-loss. Let's see 
what do we need to add in the formula? We go in the formula definition back and we know that was a win-loss chart type. Let's search the chart type win-loss. So it is in our case marked in green, in, <laughs> in blue. I stayed with the green from the last time. So what do we have here? We will need to see the negative colors. So if we are adding the neg color and then we give it a color or a color code, this will change it in our graph. And let's see how this will look like. So neg color, it is the other option that we need to add. Let's move then to the formula. And here we have the chart type win loss. And then we will need to add the new set of information. Each information, it is uh, defined by two characters. First, it is the attribute, and then it is how this attribute needs to be. So let's say, in this case, we have chart type equal win loss, and then semicolon, and then we will see, say, neg color, comma, and then we said that we would like to have it in red. And then we close the uh, quotation marks and we hit enter. Going back to this formula, because all the negative colored, all the negative values are having a color that is red, we see that those months with red numbers, so with negative sales, are now depicted in red. And if you would like to go back to the normal height of the row, it is easily to see your negative values. And of course, you can also say that all the positive values will be green or whatever color you are associated with uh, positive. I hope that you found this tutorial interesting and I hope that you will start using sparklines when you need to visualize bigger data and maybe if you will find a use for these bars, charts, please leave a comment in the comment area down below because I would really try to try it at least in one of my files. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel as I'm adding new content on a weekly basis. See you on the next one.